The Spider Weaver, A Legend of Kente Cloth, by Margaret Musgrove, and illustrated by Julia Cairns. Read by Mrs. Dujardin. Once, long ago, in the Ashanti village of Banwire, in the country of Ghana, there lived two expert weavers. One weaver was called Nana Koregu. The other was Nana Ameyao. These men wove a simple cloth called Nguen Ntoma. And everyone from the king of the Ashante people to the lowliest apprentice wore it. Late one night, Koregu and Ameyao went into the great Ashanti forest to check their traps for grass cutters, animals that they would bring home to roast. On this night, they found grass cutters in all three of their traps. The weavers were very thankful. Koregu and Ameyao were returning home when Ameyao stopped suddenly. The light from his lantern had fallen on an amazing sight, glowing like moonbeams against the midnight sky. Come, look, my friend, Ameyao whispered to Koregu. I see a small miracle. The small miracle was actually a web, but never before had either of them seen such a wondrous design. Yet it had been woven with a single, unbroken thread. A thread that was even finer than a strand of a human hair. Let's bring this treasure home with us to study, Koregu whispered to Ameyao. Ameyao carefully detached the web from where it held fast to a banana tree. But as he did, the web collapsed, sticking to his fingers. Oh, it is ruined, Koregu cried. Now how will we ever learn to weave this beautiful design? Saddened, the weavers walked home. Their discovery was lost forever. When the men entered their village at dawn, Ameyao's wife, Afia, came out to meet them. Afia offered them a calabash filled with cool water to drink. Neither man spoke as he ate, and for this reason, Afia could sense that something was wrong. Please tell me what troubles you, she said. It is a beautiful web, her husband answered sadly. When we tried to bring it home from the forest to study, it crumpled in my hands and was ruined. Do you think you can find another one like it? Afea asked quietly. Koregu was doubtful. This web was different, very special, and no creature ever spins the same web twice. Perhaps what happened was a blessing, Afia suggested gently. Though you cannot find the same web again, perhaps you can find the same weaver. And that is what Corrego and Ameyao set out to do. Early the next morning, they eagerly made their way through the bush. Past the tall silk cottons and papaya trees, they found the banana tree where they had first seen the extraordinary web. Sure enough, in front of them were the beginnings of a new masterpiece. In no time, a slender black leg emerged from the shadows and rested lightly on the silk threads. Ameao and Koregu 
could see the creature clearly now. The master web weaver was a lovely large yellow and black spider. As soon as they saw the spider, the men felt terrible for wrecking the magnificent web the night before. Now they could see that the web was the beautiful spider's home. Longing to take the web home with them, the weavers looked at each other. But neither of them wanted to destroy the spider's home a second time. They were about to leave when the spider looked directly at them and began a weaving dance. Dip, twist, turn, and glide. The spider made her way across and back over the web. She moved like a woman dancing regal and very graceful. The spider wove on and on into the afternoon, and the weavers stood still in admiration as they watched her. At dusk, the tired but satisfied spider completed her creation. The spider moved sideways to the edge of her web, but before disappearing into the shadows, she turned in the direction of Ameao and Koregu. In that brief moment, the men were quite certain she smiled at them. Then, in the blink of an eye, she was gone. The beautiful spider had shown the weavers how to weave new, intricate designs. What a wonderful teacher she had been. What a wonderful gift she had given them. With great joy, they returned to their village. In time, the weavers redesigned their looms so they could imitate the spider's weaving dance. At first, they copied her patterns in black and white thread. But soon they dyed their threads in bright colors and developed many new patterns themselves. And they named this new woven cloth Kenti Nguyen Antoma, what today is commonly called Kenti Cloth. Everyone in the village wanted to wear this new cloth, but at first only the king of the Ashanti people wore it on special occasions. As time passed, others were allowed to wear the new cloth too. Soon the two weavers were well known across Ghana, and because of the spider's generous gift, they created designs and patterns that are still worn throughout the world today. If you would like to learn more about this story and Kenti cloth, you may read the afterword at the end of the book. You will also see the pronunciation guide at the bottom where I learned how to say those new words. Now is as good a time as any to stop and take a moment to think about what wondrous ideas humans can get from living and non-living things found in nature all around us. The End <laughs>